Um, you start. Ready to go? Yeah. Ready to go. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Harsh. I'm from Intel. Excited to be here. And my name is Quentin. I'm from Red Hat. And today we're going to talk about KMM, which is indeed your Swiss Army knife for kernel modules on, on Kubernetes. Um, this is what we're going to cover today. Um, we'll start with an introduction about kernel modules, what they are, what purpose do they serve, um, and also the pain points in using them uh, in Kubernetes environments. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about the KMM operator, uh, what it is and how it solves those problems. Um, then up to you, Arch. Yeah. So then we'll talk about a real world use case, right? Enabling Intel GPUs within Kubernetes. And we'll follow that up by taking KMM on a test drive. And we're going to run a stable diffusion, gem, de, a stable diffusion demo, text to image, with a KMM enabled Intel GPU. Back to you. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for more explanations about that, that image here. Um, then a few words about KMM 2.0, which will be uh, uh, coming later this month. Uh, and then finally, uh, some Q&A if we, if we still have time. Um, all right, so let's start with an introduction about kernel modules, what they are, and, and why you, you potentially need them. Um, a, a kernel module is C code, uh, really, that extends the functionality of the, of the Linux kernel. Um, so you, you are likely to, you are going to need those functionalities for um, anything that's a driver. Um, so you, for example, Hardware drivers, uh, you know, virtual file systems, uh, kernel modules can also add syscalls uh, to your kernel. So, so this is where you're, you're going to encounter those modules. Uh, the thing is, the, the kernel modules are um, built for a specific kernel version, the technically an ABI, but um, yeah, you, you, you need to build them really against a specific set of headers for, for one kernel version. Um, in most distributions today, the kernel modules can be unloaded uh, from the system, so you will, you will be able to load them and unload them. That's not always the case. Um, and, and finally, something important is that the, um, the, the kernel modules need to be signed on secure boot-enabled systems. So uh, in short, uh, if you've been using any of these things, uh, so we have, a, we have a GPU here, uh, we have a NIC, we have an accelerator, uh, we have five systems. So if you been using any of that, then you're likely to need uh, kernel modules in your setup. And so the, the problem is that using kernel modules on, on Kubernetes setups has proven quite difficult over the years. Um, a, 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 you know, all kernel modules ideally should be contributed upstream, um, but that, that's very often quite difficult. You know, it's a long way uh, to, contribute in that, to contributing code into the kernel. Uh, it, it often takes, you know, review uh, times and everything. So, um, so, so usually people resort to using out of three kernel modules uh, to, to enable your latest hardware, to do A/B testing, these kind of things. Um, you will, you will uh, very often require uh, out of three K modes and load them into your system. Uh, and another item is that uh, using kernel modules in production can be risky. Right, uh, because you build them against a very specific kernel and for a specific ABI, if there is, for example, a kernel upgrade due to a CVE, uh, we might have to change the symbols. And if we do that, then your kernel module will not load or will not work properly. So the, the, the problem is, yeah, each time you have a kernel upgrade, pretty much you have to rebuild your, your kernel modules. And that, that really leads us to, 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 the le to the last bullet on that slide, and how, we deploy, how do we deploy and load those kernel modules on the node. So we usually resort to node customization. So uh, in some cases, you will build your node image, and you will have to do that each time you have a new K-mod or kernel version. Um, or you may want to use something like Ansible to deploy th those K-mods. But that it is usually costly and difficult to maintain. So what if we had you know, a better, uh, a more cloud-native way of handling things uh, uh, for Kubernetes setups? Um, so what, what we're trying to do with the kernel module management operator, which is, which is a Signal project, is that we are trying to bring a standard consumption model for K-Mods on Kubernetes. Um, KMM is, is, it is a Signal project that, that can build your kernel modules, and that will then that can also sign them uh, if you're using Secure Boot, 
and that will ultimately load them uh, on, your, on your nodes. Um, KMM does that by monitoring all the, kernel module version, all the kernel versions that you have running in your cluster, and then it, you know, it, it, it's then able to load the right kernel module versions on the right nodes, and that's the ultimate goal, really. Um, we also have a feature that um, allows you to run your, your device plugin, so whenever you have loaded your kernel module and made you know, whatever hardware or file system available on your node, then we will be able to run the, the device plugin as well. And yeah, an essential piece uh, of all of that, of, the, of, of KMM and of that setup is the KMOD images. So um, to, to deploy the kernel modules on the node, uh, we actually wrap them into a standard container image, an OCI image, and we add a couple more constraints. So the kernel modules need to be in a specific location and contain the mod pro binary. The, 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 the cool thing is that you can store, uh, you know, uh, K-modes for multiple kernel versions into one, into one image. And then we will use, one ima we will use that image um, to actually load the K-modes uh, on the right node. Um, yeah, that, yeah that, that's it for the K-mod image, really. And then about, yeah, at the center of KMM, obviously, is its CRD, the, the module CRD. Um, the, 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 the nice thing about it is that uh, we do have a kernel mappings list. And so that's how we actually specify that with a certain kernel version, uh, we map a, a, a K-mod image, really, a K-mod image name. And so that is how we uh, really specify that uh, those K-mods should be loaded on that node. And I will show an example in, in just a few slides. Uh, like I said, because we have this kernel mapping list, um, we can actually accommodate many distros at once. So in only one CR, you can, uh, uh, you know, express that um, with AWS or Ubuntu or Red Hat or whatever, you know, distro kernels. Um, you, you should map those with uh, specific images. And finally, because, you know, I told you that KMM can build your kernel modules. It can also use pre-built um, images. And so you can mix and match as you please. You can pre-build for some kernels. And, and use pre-built for some others, that, that's totally fine. Right. And, and this is, I mean, at, at a very high level, this is how the, the reconciliation works for the operator. So um, at, at the beginning, uh, you know, we have to determine that uh, certain nodes needs a certain driver or a certain K-mode because it's equipped with some hardware or it needs to have some file system available. So that's, that's on the very uh, you know, left of, of that slide. So whenever KMM determines that a node needs a K-mod, and if we have builds configured in the CRD, uh, then KMM is going to check if the image exists. If it does not exist, we are going to create a pod to, to, to build that image. More on that in a, in a subsequent slide. And once that image exists, uh, we are then going to look at uh, whether we need a signed image uh, to be compatible for secure boot. If we do need such an image and it doesn't exist yet, then we are going to create a pod to build that. Uh, finally, you know, we have everything ready. And um, whenever we have that image prepared, then what we're going to do is we are going to create the actual pod on the node. Uh, that pod is going to copy any firmware file if we need to. And ultimately, it's going to load the K-mod. Um, this is the, the really the simplest module we could come up with. Um, still, it, it, it shows the value of KMM, right? So the important bit here would be the kernel mappings list that we have. Uh, you can see here that uh, we have one entry for um, Fedora 37 kernel here. And um, the CRD says that, yeah, for that very kernel, we are going to use a very specific image. But, but because we, we can configure either literals or regex, uh, then you can see that at the next uh, entry in that list, uh, we address all the Fedora 37 kernels at once. And, uh, and yeah, because we do variable substitution in the container image field, um, then it makes really the CRD very flexible. Finally, at the bottom is a selector here. So you, can, you, can, you could deploy your K-mode just on a subset of nodes uh, as needed. Right, that's it for that slide. Um, I think I'll go fast around those. Uh, this is an example on how you configure the builds uh, in your module CRD. Um, so you would specify, uh, you, you, you would need to provide the config map 
uh, with the Docker file, and we would use that you know, as a recipe to build your K-modes for that version. Uh, we are going to, to inject the kernel version so that uh, in, your config, in, in your Docker file, you'll be able to fetch the right headers for the right kernel version. And we will run all of that with Kaniko. So we will create a pod that runs Kaniko, and that produce your, produces your final K-mod image. Uh, we do support the build arguments. We do support secrets. Um, and, and a couple of uh, registry-related uh, settings. Uh, this, is, this is about signing, really same story. Uh, very similar, you have, to, you have to provide yourself, obviously, the, the keys. Uh, you have to provide the list of uh, KO files that you want to sign in your image. And what we're going to do, uh, it's also powered by Kaniko. We're going to download that image, uh, extract all the KO files, sign them, and build a new image. And, and that, that, that's how we... Uh, make those, those K-modes available for secure boot. Uh, that's it. I have uh, here a diagram that explains how it works. So let's consider all those six nodes here. We have a six-node cluster. Um, three of those nodes are running kernel one, two, three, uh, in pink color right here. Um, two of, the, of those nodes are running kernel four, five, six. Um, and node four here is running yet another kernel that we will actually not configure uh, in our kernel mappings list. At the very top, we do have, uh, you know, KMM watching on the module uh, and the nodes. Uh, let's say we do not have uh, a KMOD image yet for kernel one, two, three, so we may have to build it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to read the Docker file, uh, create the build pod, you know, with the Docker file mounted, and that's how we are going to produce that KMOD image containing all the KO files. Um, once we have everything nice and ready, then we are going to create a daemon set that's only going to target the, the nodes with the first kernel, kernel one, two, three. And that daemon set, in turn, is going to create pods uh, on each node. And those pods are going to, to load the kernel modules. Um, so same story, really, with the second kernel that we have. Uh, and finally, oh, well, you will note that on node four, we're not loading anything because, because it's not configured in our CRD, in our CR. Uh, and then once, you know, once the K-mod is loaded on all the nodes that uh, actually need it, uh, then we are going to run the device plugin. And you know, KMM manages labels and annotations automatically. Mm -hmm. So it can determine where it should be loading the, it should be running the device plugin. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's, that's really how it works. So yeah, we have, you know, we have way more features. Uh, we're actually labeling the nodes whenever a node is loaded. So that makes you know, scheduling your applications using the K-mode very easily. Um, we, we, we do copy uh, binary firmware files from the K-mode image onto the nodes. Uh, so that's really useful in, for hardware. And I mean, we have many more features. I'm not going to go into details on, on all of those, I believe. And about the use case, Hirsch. Thank you. Over to Thanks, you. Quentin. That was a great overview of all the features. I'll give you a well-deserved break. Sorry? I'll give you a well-deserved quick break. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So let's shift gears a bit. Let's talk about kind of a real-world use case, right? So, you know, taking KMM on a test drive, right? So just a little bit of background on this kind of use case, right? So what kind of environment we're dealing with today where, you know, it's a fast-changing landscape that's AI-driven and you know, what, what's coming out of it is it's demanding the latest hardware enabling to run, you know, some of the most industry-leading workloads, right? And if you kind of step into that a bit, um, one of the fundamental components that enable these devices are the kernel drivers. And so, you know, these latest drivers really need to be used to unlock the optimal workload performance. And then the other thing I want to talk about briefly is kind of the chicken and egg problem. Right, so there is always this delay between the hardware and the software being ready. And in this scenario, we're talking about the drivers that are essentially out of tree. Um, and so that essentially prevents uh, developers, customers, and partners to leverage the latest and greatest hardware in their workloads. The problem today is there's not really a facilitated approach that's scalable, right? So this is why we're talking about KMM. That's what it brings to the table. A little bit about the production environment, right? So one of the realities is a um, lot of the latest hardware is not really truly enabled on day one. There are actually some non-trivial uh, operations that are quite complex 
Um, this is usually managed through configuration. The second point being all the complex node and kernel customization that's required to enable these kind of use cases and the hardware. So let's go to the next slide. So this is delving into, you know, why are we talking about it today, right? Why solve it today, right? So um, a lot of the leading edge XPU devices. So from that, I, you know, think of GPUs, C, um, TPUs, IPUs, network, networking products, right? All of these devices, a um, lot of them require enabling out of tree drivers to use them, right, to consume them. And a lot of these kernel drivers are unavailable in OS distributions. And there's a two-part story to that, right? One of the challenges is uh, the initial journey to upstream of an out-of-tree driver. And that cadence is a relatively long period, and it's a sequential process. So the second thing that follows it is going into the downstream distributions. So the goal here is to really shift left and make sure that the hardware and software is ready on day one so that you know, everyone can consume all the latest and greatest features and technologies that are built into the hardware. And so the big impact, the thing to leave with today is really, you know, KMM is really enabling and accelerating the XPU enabling, right? And the time to market. And thereby it's unlocking all the optimized workloads and use cases that, and it's actually facilitating use case, uh, use case driven development by allowing customers to really um, shift left and use, use these features in their workloads. So another item to talk about is um, KMM and a driver CI pipeline. So actually KMM, we have a project, open source project recently that we've started uh, to essentially leverage KMM and, and power our driver CI pipeline. So what do I mean by a, a driver CI pipeline, right? Um, essentially what it is is the ability to build a pre-built KMOD image or a driver container. And this pipeline really addresses two key scenarios, right? And it, the problem here is much more multidimensional than that, but these are the fundamental scenarios. The first one is the idea of a new driver version being available, right? Very common uh, scenario to see. The second one being, you know, a new kernel version. And that could be due to a multitude of reasons, right? I think Quentin alluded to some from a CVE perspective. Um, some. As an extension that, to that, uh, some of our future work has been on being able to facilitate seamless driver upgrades. And so the value of this pipeline for you know, our customers is essentially it allows them to enable GPUs in seconds with pre-built images, as opposed to something that's you know, built on premise, right? So it goes from minutes to seconds from an enabling perspective. And so the flow would look something like this. We have a two-step uh, uh, a flow at the bottom here, where we, the first step is essentially you deploy the pre-built image with KMM, and that essentially allows uh, the enabling of the device. And then on the second step here, we kind of build it out and leverage the GPU device plugin to extend the GPU resource to the kubelet, essentially for workload consumption on the user space. That's right. So this is the exciting part. Um, you know, we want to talk about the demo, you know, take KMM on a test drive. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about enabling Intel GPUs with KMM on Kubernetes. So just to set the context before we get into the live demo. Um, so this demo is running on a single node Kubernetes cluster um, with our Intel Flex 170 GPU. Um, we're running one Jupyter pod with OpenVINO and the associated runtime libraries. Uh, you can see some of the resource uh, limits listed here from a CPU perspective, 20 cores and 64 gigs of RAM. And the demo fundamentally is the idea of first building and loading the GPU driver with KMM, essentially enabling the device, and then following that up with running a real-world text-to-image notebook with stable diffusion and open Vino on both the CPU and GPU to see the advantage of it, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'll hand it over to Absolutely. Quentin. Absolutely. Bring on the logos. Yes. Oh, we have the logos yeah, here we today. We do have the logos. So that's, yeah. yeah, we're going to use uh, yeah, a variety of technologies today. We have Minikube, we have Jupyter, we have Hugging Face Transformers. 
Uh, and finally, OpenVINO. Uh, the, the, the resources are important here because we're, uh, like Hirsch said, you know, we're first going to run it on CPU, see how long it takes, then enable the GPU and run the same workload, see, see how long it takes with the GPU. All right, so let's switch to, to the terminal. Uh, I'm logged in on, uh, on that, that the, the Intel Dev Cloud VM. It, it does have the, the GPU. Let's, you know, let's list all the pods here. Uh, we don't have anything now. Okay, that's fine. Um, so let's now create the Jupyter pod. Cool. Okay, let's, let's just do that. All right, we're you know, creating a couple of objects. Uh, we also need a storage class to persist the data, um, persistent vol volume claim, but let's not worry about that. Okay, the pod is running here. Uh, I, think, I think we can now log in. Okay, here we are. Uh, let's, let's log in here. Awesome. And we should have the, yeah, Jupyter interface. Wonderful. Okay, I'll, I'll just open the notebook here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of what the notebook does, really. Um, it's taking a bit longer than usual, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Had to happen, huh? Okay. Let's reload that. Okay. Awesome. It is taking a bit longer, but... Patience is um, I will just clear the output of all cells. I think I did that already, but yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do first is uh, we are going to fetch the stable diffusion pipelines. Um, it's actually cached for... Uh, because of the demo, right, to, to run faster. Um, then, you know, that PyTorch model, we are actually going to convert it to um, an, something that uh, can be run with OpenVINO. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then we are going to compile the models. First, we are going to compile them for CPU and then for GPU. Um, but we do not have anything loaded here. Uh, I can actually show you that. I think, yeah, I think I, sh I need to do that, right? Run uh, all above selected cell. Yeah, so then I will stop here. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're going to run everything. And, okay, uh, so we do ls mod grep i915, uh, I so that's the name of the kernel module that's the Intel GPU driver. Um, so because we grep here, we don't have anything. So it's empty, module is not loaded, right? Uh, and that's what OpenVINO reports, right? The only device available for inference is the CPU right now. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Still, we want to generate one image with it. Okay, um, so all these steps, you know, I'm, I'm not going into the details there. Uh, I think I'm just going to go into, into that one. And yeah, exactly, okay. I don't know if that's going to run everything. No, probably not. Okay, so we are compiling the models now. This should be really short. Okay, and already we are generating the first image, which should be a valley in the Alps. Um, and that's only using the 20 cores of the CPU that we made available to this pod. And you can see that this is going to take something like a, a bit more than, I think, 33 sec seconds. Yeah, little something around like 30 that. seconds. So, uh, I think we're already, yeah, we're already halfway. Okay, this takes a lot of processing power, as you know, obviously. Yeah, this is, this is taking some time. In the meantime, any guesses for how long the GPU will take? You can make your own guess. Okay, so this is, I think the Wi-Fi the wi is maybe a bit slower in that room because it should show the image. Okay, here we go. Here we are, here we are. It is indeed a bit slower, um, but nice image, right? Uh, and this was just generated with the, with the CPU. Okay, uh, but we don't want to stop here. Obviously, we want to enable the GPU, uh, you know, load, load its driver, make it available to the notebook. Uh, back to the terminal to do that. Uh, we are actually going to create uh, a config map that contains the, the Docker file to build the Intel driver. Uh, we are also going to add a secret that is a pull secret to my query repo, because we want to build that image, upload it to Quay.io, so then it's available for KMM to be loaded on the nodes. Uh, I'll do just that now. Uh, I think it's mod. Exactly. I can, I can show you what the module consists in. Uh, really. Really quickly, uh, it's, it's very simple. I think it's pretty similar to what you saw on the slides. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if that's really visible. Maybe I'm in front of it. But really, uh, so 
uh, we are mapping that image to just one kernel, which is the kernel that's currently running on the VM. Uh, and we are, you know, we are using the build option here, which means that because the, the image is not already available on Quay, we will have to build it and upload it. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at the logs. I'm sorry? The build logs? Yeah, yes, we want the build logs. So they're on the right. Uh, let's see what's going on there. Okay. Yeah, so we are, I think, yeah, we're downloading all the packages now. No, we did download all the headers and the compilers, everything that's needed to produce that KMOD image. Right now, we're actually comp uh, compiling the object files yes. um, to produce the KO, the, the, the final kernel module. Um, so I think this, uh, th this machine is really fast. I think this completes within two minutes. Yep, uh, less than two minutes. Something like that. So, so yeah, what, one, one good aspect really of this build system that we have embedded in KMM is that uh, if we have many nodes uh, that share the same kernel and we need to build an image for that very kernel, we are only going to build once, uh, which, is, which is actually quite handy. Um, in that case, really, we're not... Ah, so we're, we're done compiling everything. I think, yeah, we're, we're actually pushing um, to Quay.io. So within seconds, what you're going to see on the right is the, the, the module loader pod, the, the, the pod that's actually created by the daemon set that KMM creates, and that pod is going on the node to run mod probe to, to load the KMOD. And this should happen as soon as the, the push is complete right there. It, it does take a few seconds, I think. I'm not sure why, because the image is quite small. It's only mod probe and a couple KOs. Yep. I wanted to re-highlight that, uh, you know, building once and deploying anywhere, given that the node has the same kernel version, I think that's really a valuable takeaway, so. It is. And as you can see, you know, we pushed. Mm -hmm. um, KMM keeps reconciling, obviously. Uh, and you can see that, that that very pod actually has loaded the kernel. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the, to the Jupyter notebook. So now you're telling me the GPU should be enabled? The GPU should be enabled, indeed. Okay, uh, okay let's... We, I think we need to Let's restart the kernel. Yes, we, we do need to restart the kernel and run up to select itself. That's exactly what I want. Okay. Okay, let, let's have a look at this cell right here, right? Uh, this LS mode grep i 9915 Oh, so there's, there's some output now. So uh, that Intel GPU driver is actually loaded into the, into awesome. the, the, the node's kernel now. It's available to the, to the Jupyter notebook in the pod. And actually, OpenVINO reports that. You know, it's saying available devices, CPU and GPU. That's, that's really wonderful. And yeah, the good thing is that we can now select GPU here and, and have a much greater performance. OK, let's, let's run that. Uh, now we need to compile the models for the GPU. I think it's, it's still quite short, yeah, isn't it? It's relatively yes. fast. Yes, yes. OK, so this, this will again take a couple of seconds. I think I'll, I will advance manually now. Exactly, so it's, it's completing. Good, good. Okay, so let's, let's advance, and we are going to regenerate exactly the same image of the, uh, of the Alps, uh, nice valley in the Alps. You can see that it's actually much faster. It's uh, three times faster because we're using the GPU, and it completes in only 12 seconds instead of 35 with the 20 GPU cores that we had in the pod. Almost 57% faster. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can see you've done the math. Yes, I have. I have not. I just know it's faster. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the image is, is a bit slow to load in, in this location. I'm not sure why, but uh, here it is. Okay. Uh, I think we have a couple more that we wanted to show. We're in Chicago, so we wanted to show the Chicago Cloud Gate. Uh, you may have seen this image before. You may have seen this image before if you paid attention. At the very beginning of the talk, yeah. So it, it's actually faster to generate the image than to download it from the pod with this Wi-Fi. It's interesting. Interesting. Uh, anyway, again, 13 seconds uh, for a completely different image, right? The seed is different. The prompt is different. And yeah, you know what? I, I should probably stop that one because it takes so long to, yeah, here we are. Nice. It, it's, not, it's not bad, actually. It's not bad. And, and the final one, we want Chicago at sunset. And the GPU is only using 16 gigs of memory, and right? Compared it, to 64 gigs from the CPU. So you're that, really seeing how well it can crunch it. That is right. That's right. That's right. This doesn't use any, any CPU to generate the images now. 
And since we have a, a bit more time, I think I'm, I'm going to show you guys. OK, so here we are. Again, it's, I think it's not that bad. Um, but that's it. That's it. We went, to, we went from uh, you know, zero GPU enabled in the, in the pod to uh, you know, having the GPU fully provisioned and available for inference uh, in just yeah, probably something like five or six minutes. Uh, just need to compile the image, push it, uh, and that's it. It's available. Uh, one thing I wanted to show the audience because we have uh, some time is okay. If we do, you want to get some audience input. Do we want? Image? Do we want to do that? Does Does anyone want to suggest something? We can do that. He wants to say. Okay, I'm can you sorry. Can you mic? move to the microphone? Yeah, because landscapes are super nice, but they are so boring. So oh. I would like to see Santa Claus and Easter Bunny at the family dinner. I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, hold on, hold on now. <laughs> I think we'll stick to Santa Claus. Because I'm not sure. I, I've been trying some, you know, human shapes. Um, not always with... Uh, do you have a favorite number? Do you? 2023, let's see what happens. Okay, generating. I hope it's not too disturbing, all right? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. Oh, wow. Here we are. Not bad at all. Here we are. And I think he has a full hand, not only four fingers. You can, yeah, something's going on near the bird, but, but I think this is, this is still pretty good. I'm not sure what's happening with the hat also, but yeah. Okay, anyway, regardless. Um, yeah, j just showing you guys quickly that uh, not only can you load the, the, the kernel modules and the driver, I will clear this. Um, so we do have the, the Jupyter pod here, and we have the, 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 the module loader pod here. Uh, if we do LS mod grep i915, then we have you know all the Intel stuff loaded right now. Uh, we can actually, uh, if we kill the workload first, so I will delete that pod here. Okay, so we have nothing using the K mod, which uh, would actually prevent us from unloading the the the, the kernel module. Um, so right now I will actually uh, delete uh, the KMM module resource. Okay, it is deleted, and when, when we delete it, actually, it kills the module loader pod, which in turn uh, you know, uh, runs modprobe-r again to just uh, re uh, unload the kernel module. And now if I, if I ls mod grep i915, then the module is not there, and we have successfully unprovisioned the, the kernel module. Um, Do we want to take it one step further and deploy the pre-built image since no, it's been? I, I don't think so. Um, I think we have a couple more slides oh, to, to, to cover here. Uh, just a, a few words about KMM 2.0, which we're uh, still you know, finalizing. Uh, this will be out uh, at the end of this month. Uh, the, the, the improvement here is that we're not using daemon sets anymore to load the kernel modules on each node. We're actually creating uh, short-lived pods that are running mode probe once and then exiting. Um, this, this should you know, provide a better reliability uh, and a much lower footprint because nothing is running whenever, uh, whenever we have loaded everything. Uh, we will, this will also improve the, the binary firmware uh, support because the, the, the worker pod will be able to, to, load, uh, to, to set some kernel parameters. I, I won't go into details there. Um, but yeah, it will be available later this month. Um, wrapping up, Again, KMM is really a Kubernetes operator that, is, that was designed to load the right kernel modules on the right node. It can also build those kernel modules, sign them if you want. Uh, we, we really intend it to be a standard consumption model. It you know, it's, has a flexible API. You can embed the, the module resource in your operator. You can have your operator deploy it to load the kernel modules and abstract that away, and that is really the goal here. Um, the latest available version is v1.1. Um, we're working in V2.0, it should be available later this month. Uh, and if you want a more really great demos of uh, inference um, using the, the Intel GPU provision by KMM, but on OpenShift, because we have an OpenShift edition of KMM, then please pass by the Intel booth um, yeah, to, to, to yeah. watch those awesome definitely demos. Definitely check it out. Check it out. 
Uh, that's it. Thank you.